Hello, my friends. I thought I'm going to give a little update. Uh, you know, I'm going to name this video uh, exactly how far things came in this case. I'm going to exactly, I'm going to explain to you how far things came in this place. Uh, they came really, really far. Uh, they came way further than what any person would allow, uh, you know, uh, for things to go on. This is just, I'm going to give you a taste of it. I, I was at immigration yesterday. Uh, and the, uh, the immigration, I was told to come on 21st at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm going to say a semi-challenging thing. I'm going to have to be out of here at 6 o'clock in the morning at least to get there by um, 9 o'clock in the morning. Because I don't want to take a risk and probably even so I'm going to take probably a train or something like this. I have no idea. Um, and on the way back, it's just going to be a costly day. And it's going to go at my expenses because they don't provide any money for the stuff like that either. Um, yesterday, what I did not mention, I barely made it. I barely made it. And that's because... We'll explain to you and in a little just a little while ago I have written myself a note on what exactly am I gonna do what my tasks are gonna be for Monday this is how far things came I never wrote anywhere anything about what my plans are for the next day and so on because I always knew what exactly am I supposed to do um, I always synchronized I don't like to write uh, not even on a paper Forget about electronic equipment, what my plans are for the next day. Just like Donald Trump, I don't, doesn't like to have emails sent around. Uh, I don't even like to write down what exactly am I going to do for the next day. I like to keep this to myself in my head and I go about it. And uh, I love the system like this for obvious reasons. And I find it unacceptable now for me to actually start writing down what am I going to have to do for the next day. That sucks. I can write down for what I have to buy myself in the store where I go. But when it comes to plans and stuff like this, this is what I don't do. And things have come really, really far. I tell you that, boy. They knew about the situation it's going to develop for the next day they knew about my plan going over there meeting these people so they started to harass uh, it must have been four o'clock in the morning already I couldn't sleep at 4 30 I was already spinning around like uh, like you spin barbecue <sighs> I was bitten up I didn't get enough sleep boy and you know, for that exactly same reason. I don't know what situation is going to be on Monday with library here. Library is such that library is closed when important stuff is about to happen. And I told you that the whole thing is like to the millimeter, to the last millimeter, exactly to what went on under MK Ultra. Uh, things like this happen. Library gets closed, but when I appear, somehow, some way, I found, I did found, I find, I found other people having access to one. And me myself, before I say this, because me myself before, it was like a manipulation by this librarian here gesturing like during the normal opening hours to a few of us we can stay inside of the library uh just because we are her friends uh but to not to open anybody this is this is this is the manipulation techniques that were used to get your trust all along but not to let anybody inside or even say a word be quiet like a mouse you can work on the computer be quiet on like a mouse I go to pick up children, I go to wherever I go. 
And so now we know France no more. I, you know, I guess now that that sign over there at the library is just for me, I guess. Because I got the feeling, based on what I have seen, is that this library is not so much close when I'm out of here, when I go for a walk, you know, 20 kilometer walk, whatever. I think it's quite open, actually. And so, since all this shit is synchronized with this center, the stuff that, like this is happening, I came to the conclusion that tomorrow, which is Sunday, I'm going to be radiated again like a mouse. Because the next thing is coming is Monday, right? So, what they would not want me is to use electronic equipment and to communicate with international human rights organizations, governments, and so on and so forth. This is logical thing to me. So when you are messed up like this, when you wake up messed up like that, uh, it's nice to have a piece of paper. Since you are not a complete idiot yet, uh, that you can look at, and read and know at least what you should try to do in which field you should try to do your best for the day but this is how far things have gotten here like i said this is unusual for me this is not how i do it uh but they they did they do stuff like this so then i have to go and do stuff like i never did in my lifetime this is bad i don't know maybe i probably is a lot of you doing this stuff uh, but I never did stuff like this. I never, I don't like doing stuff like that. And for me, this is quite unacceptable, really, to do the stuff like this. The main thing in this case for me is to contact international community. That's human rights organizations such as Amnesty International, United Nations. Communicate with them because Protocol 24 in this case, which Polish government have exercised against me, was misused for a whole variety of issues. Uh, number one, Protocol 24 was mis misused. That's basically the, how you, as a citizen of another European Union membership state, don't have the right to apply for political protection within anywhere within European Union, basically in any other European Union member state, was misused to accept liabilities, number one, for Polish involvement in the case itself. It's basically the torture that went on, ongoing torture that went on here when brought from the US between 98 all the way to 2006 and all the way up to 2016 because I was brought back occasionally to uh, confuse me on timing. Basically, ongoingly the torture went from 98 to mid 2006, but I was occasionally brought back to confuse me uh, afterwards uh, to confuse me on timing because they knew they they insisted. Americans, thanks to Americans, Americans helped me out big time. Americans helped me out more than... In, in, in a way, it was a good thing that, that, uh, that I'm here because I... Uh, you know, you remind yourself who, what, did what for you, you know, who tried to do you good. Uh, and I can say that Americans, Americans... Um, Americans were the people that were concerned for me, that, that would go around and beg Polish people to help me out. Some, and some of them <laughs> were bad. Israelis were really bad. I'm going to tell you that. They really, really discouraged. They really, on every step of the way, they just wanted to confuse, create problems and so on. Steer problems, along with Russians. They steered problems. They steered problems. Uh, and again, there were also some Israelis also that helped out. There was an Israeli guy that also helped out, I remember. Uh, it was like 50-50 with them. Uh, Americans, on the other hand, were very concerned 
for what Donald Trump was doing, disliked him. His own son, Eric Trump, whom, by the way, I have blasted on a news site. And I know he should know better than that. Um, liked me and became subject of MK Ultra. He became subject of Donald Trump's MK Ultra. Sometimes, and if you look at his photos, in 2006, Eric already looked like me, like half retarded. We both looked like half retarded, but the difference, the difference was that I was really tortured and only since 95. He, on the other hand, started to taste uh, Trump, Donald Trump, his daddy, started to F with him and have gestured that because, because Eric uh, kind of liked me. And he started to, uh, that he learned that I was also guilty that he learned from me. Uh, you know, I shouldn't even probably say that. You know, I was, I was merciless. Uh, the more they subjected me to the torture, the more I, uh, the more I found ways to uh, subject into humiliation, to the mental humiliation. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, and so Donald started to suggest people around that he's going to destroy his son, his own son, if he's going to continue with uh, this kind of attitude, that he developed attitude like I did. And so that was Eric. Uh, I just wish that Eric would a little bit remind himself, and I hope that he's going to take this in account that his own daddy wasn't... You know, was going to go as far as destroying him through MK Ultra. How much do I know about it all? You be scary much I know about it all. Scary much I know about it all. I have written yesterday on my news site about the Poroshenko. Poroshenko is a good man. Poroshenko was involved already early in 98, 99, even earlier, 97. And became like a regular like interactor with uh, major players. Um, which also Ruskis were. The thing about it is, however, the things for him became extremely dangerous. Russians have labeled me in Poland as Stefan Bandera. Stefan Bandera, not very popular in Poland because of deed he left behind against the Polish people over there in, in area of Lvov in, in western part of Ukraine. I'm just going to say both sides had political issues. What he did was very wrong, of course, but labeling me as a Stepan Bandera I actually loved Polish woman, boy, I would be more than happy to marry one and give her everything I possibly could in life, woman could have. Um, I was crazy about the Polish woman and at the same time when they were calling me, Ruskis were calling me here, uh, they created a schizophrenic type of environment in which many Polish people become, begun to engage. Uh, many Polish people began to see in me Stefan Bandera. Many Polish people started to see evil in me. And uh, I was known as a Stefan Bandera. I was quoted as Stefan Bandera uh, simultaneously with Russians literally raping, raping Polish women, raping them, killing them and males in some circumstances and 
this is what the situation was. This is this is what this is. That's why they have done, you know. That's why I'm angry in this, in respect to Poland using this issue. Uh, and so what what happened to Poroshenko was, I just want to finish this and go back to the other issue. Sometimes in 2002 or 2003, Poroshenko disappeared from the stage, from the background stage, interacting with the politicians because things became for him extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous, like deadly dangerous, like you have no idea. Uh, you could disappear, you could be killed like Rusk has set you up. Uh, you would be dead like uh, like you don't believe you just accidents just happen you dead you just dead you die you get disease they would give out diseases they would give out all kinds of stuff that would happen people would just get people that would not submit themselves Polish people they would just become sick or they would lose family members and so on and so Poroshenko was already like I'm gonna say five minutes to midnight he disappeared. He involved other people in it. Uh, latest Ukrainian comedian was one of them. Uh, and was just extremely intelligent player in, I'm going to say, like in, a, in the last second, in the last minute. And what happened was I mistaken the whole thing. Uh, I started to believe that dude is actually, um, you know, that he alone is, is just acting, that he alone is... The same, like, uh, you know, this Putin is screw. Because the problem here is not about the Russian people. The problem was with the Putin. The problem was with KGB assassins. That, I'm not going to say Putin, uh, that accompanied Putin, but people that he personally handpicked for the assignment, for the foreign assignments. This is where the problem was. It was irregular. It was strange. It was beyond criminal people they had it was so criminal that the americans were like shocked when they when they watched these beasts uh but at the same time they feared them because you see you're engaging in business with all kinds of nations polish czech slovak and so on and you see the people like zaman like this total drunks uh that basically wakes up and is just the first thing he reaches out is for a bottle of uh, I don't know vodka whiskey whatever. Uh, then he's looking. Then he's yelling to bring him his stick um, and stuff like that. Uh, and sometimes by the evening, actually, he somehow manages through his pathetic memories to assemble himself together enough to go to the strip club, nightclub, whatever, uh, on a dinner, to the restaurant, whatever, and so on, and shit like this. So when you're in an environment like this and you want to do business and you want to learn about more, then you just have to go along and you have to play with it. You don't actually, you, you don't get to choose much. First you have to see who is what is to learn. Okay, so... Simultaneously to that, Russians started to assemble themselves from Ukrainian Russians inside of our home in Slovenia. Bergers, they brought this neighbors hosted literally Ukrainian uh, Russians who would go out there and openly suggest how it's going to be, how they're going to create war against Ukraine. How the Ukraine is just going to become again part of Russia, whether they like it or not, they're going to run them over with the tanks and stuff like this. Gesture in me, how I alone, uh, I am needed by the Russia, and because Americans would just keep bringing me back, and it would be just more and more and more terror, and nothing more than a terror. Sometimes, probably in 2004, 2005, 2006, I started to switch table uh toward russians they promised all kinds of uh i don't know uh possibilities to me and they brainwashed on how they involved this ukrainian people also and how this we are all the same we're all the same and this and that in real time afterwards the news would match stuff they brainwashed me like how it's the same dna and stuff like this and it's i don't know what and it's gonna be so great and so on 
basically new USSR, they totally messed me up. I resisted them until after MKUltra ended, until 2016, and then when, you know, I saw that, you know, the people that Poroshenko was already in a political stage for two years, people just didn't give shit about me, I kind of came to conclusion that um, that probably is the way it is. They probably do, uh, you know, see themselves as a Russians and probably would be the best thing for everybody, you know, to just assemble themselves back into, into a Soviet Union and so on. And so it was just done in a, such a way that Poroshenko probably got scared of me, being around me, because I had assisted to them under MKUltra for so long, then he got probably, uh, because of my hatred that I developed, I started to incite into a hatred, uh, literally into a Nazism. He probably got scared of me on that, on that issue. Then I started to incite into a Stalinism, because this is what they do to you folks, this is what they have done to me, it's crazy. You go from one ideology to the other extreme, you have no idea uh, how things like this can be done. Um, he probably got scared even more of me when I was over there in 2017, boy. He probably, you know, started to promote Stalin and stuff like this, probably that he would not want to even know about me. but. Uh, he was very intelligent in the background of it all. He did his own game. He played, he, he improved the weapons, uh, even that was embargo in Ukraine, a total block. What he did was a very intelligent thing. He developed his own, in the background, his own uh, ways. By the way, the priest that he have kicked out of the Ukraine, I am shocked that he only kicked him out. I am shocked that he didn't give him a bullet in the head. That's an Orthodox Russian priest. I'm shocked. The priest was a terrorist, also involved in MK Ultra. This is a real shit. This is a real thing. Extremely aggressive individual who would go out about threaten people with assassinations and stuff like this, that they're gonna be killed if you're only gonna open your mouths. You have no idea how deep uh, Russia had Ukrainian politicians alone in their claws. And so I'm shocked and I salute this. I, I, I am happy that he's not going to go and, and, and uh, that he didn't go about and make his hands uh, bloody with this poor, poor excuse of a human being is how I'm going to say a terrorist, a real Russian terrorist, uh, and have instead of that just throw him out of the Ukraine. The right thing to do, Mr. Poroshenko, about everything. Everything you have done, you did the right thing, and I apologize uh, for the issues, uh, you know. I have probably created myself more than anybody else, thanks to the Russians. Um, we go back to Americans, so I just wanted to, to be very specific about that. So we go back to Americans, I'm going to put it like this. Um, Americans helped out by assessing the situation itself, which would take place in the future. I'm talking about the staff members, not about Donnie, not about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is an idiot, idiot, a total beyond believable idiot that... Americans didn't like, nobody liked really Donald Trump, uh, especially not because of the case that pertained to me in this whole thing and what, is, what was about to happen so on. And so what they, what they would do is they would do their best possible to see themselves in my situation and would try, try, try to solicit help from the local people and so on, which quite successfully somehow they managed. And this Polish people, they sacrificed, boy, they, they tried to help out. Of course, there will always be idiots that will continue to see whatever the hell they want to see. There will always be schizophrenics, World War II schizophrenics, that will continue to see 
Stefan Banderas, neo-Nazis, uh, in according to the Russian agenda. This this will always be. It will be everywhere. It will be in Ukraine. It will be in Poland, uh, and so on. But for the major part, Polish people have realized uh, what went on, what happened, and so they did open their eyes. And thank thanks God, they did help me out. American staff members, MK Ultra staff members, helped me out big time, tremendously big time, and I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I'm not out of all this. I'm not out of it, but I want to thank uh, because this kind of evaluations, this kind of input, more than anything, I would react in the same way exactly as I did. It's not that you would give me like a platform on how I should see things as. Especially not because of what the U.S. did to me in 2000, you know, from, you know, in 2006, in 2005, I was told, get out of U.S., we don't want to hear. And again, back in 2009 and a half, actually recorded, audio recorded, so-called roommate and so on, uh, saying this kind of stuff. Uh, I had a lot against the U.S. I was angry about placing me, blacklisting me with employment, blacklisting me even with the right to rent and stuff like that, with basic needs. So I was everything but happy with Americans. We are still not done in respect to those issues. But American staff, um, MK Ultra staff members, you know, stuff that I have gone over myself and I have analyzed as per how to see the things, uh, there might be small variations in respect to how uh, they have seen things, just only that I was more sophisticated because I was subjected to more real, you know, it's I that am in this situation. They they were not. Uh, but I got to say that they have seen themselves a lot on how I would see the situation as. And their input was very valuable, was very precious to me as per, as per basically uh, assuring me that the way I see things is the way the way I have analyzed things that to the certain conclusions I would come, which matched their conclusions that uh, basically I am not on a wrong path. Few times I could be on a wrong path if I would completely follow the stuff. There were, like I said, there were there were people also American. There was American who was. Jewish and he just happened not to like me he just didn't like me didn't like me and uh, he had certain created certain very brilliantly brainwashed brainwashing issues parallel to other people who have created their own that could if I would follow him uh, that would steer me most likely in a very wrong direction this guy is now in Israel by the way So it was all kinds of stuff, but for, for concerning Americans as an Americans, I just have to say thank you. It just assured me that me being me is okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It's the right path you're taking. It's the correct one. Okay. And so what happens is with a human rights, basically, it's like this: Poland committed atrocity in this case is what should never ever have done it on the first place did not have the right to engage in a torture did not have the right to allow torture to happen on a territory of the Poland against American and European Union citizen you see you cannot use the law to block European Union citizen from uh, applying for political protection in your country through the European Union law known as Protocol 24 uh, when you have before he exercised his right to apply for such protection abuse the European law itself there is nowhere specified within the European Union law 
constitution that you as a country, as a state, have the right to uh, engage in a torture against European Union citizen, which I am, or against the US citizen uh, who have not committed any, absolutely any crimes, anything whatsoever. That would be number one thing. Number two would be obviously what have, have happened here during the last six months, which fits a total match description of physical torture, physical and mental torture. Uh, taken even advantage of by filming the whole thing. And number three, going as far as disallowing an individual in a country where he filed for political protection, even we, if we disregard everything else, everything, we can disregard even physical torture in the past, what happened during this six-month ordeal here, you have gone as a state as far as misusing your own laws, as, as far as misusing your own Polish laws, constitution, by simply using non-Polish law known as Protocol 24 to, number one, gesture me how I don't have the right to apply in this country for political protection, on which answer, as I have submitted to you, you have declined to answer past a deadline period. Basically, I have requested answer from you after six months, and you have uh, provided me with a second response, with a second answer, since I have requested for uh, information on a work permit, few days later, after six months already have passed, uh, with idea to block me not only from employment in the state of the Poland, for yet at least another six months, therefore to submit me to more torture for additional six months, possibly even, even to uh, bend me off, to disallow me to apply for protection here for the second time, that's, that's a very strong possibility, that's number one thing. And the second part, the worst about all this stuff is that you have violated your Polish constitution because you have not responded within the time limits. You did not provide me from, from your side with answer on my, res, on my response to you, on my first response to you uh, till the time already passed by the the you see there there is a there is a timing limit when you are allowed as a state to respond uh and uh, you know even if a number amount of days would uh how can i say would fit the description of the proper response um your own conflicting laws uh, have disallowed you to do so. You cannot do this stuff like this. You have to respond to the state before uh, the six-month period so the individual knows what's going on and so he can again, again uh, respond to you and he have also the ability, the chance to uh, communicate uh, with, you know, other organizations, governments, and so on and so forth, uh, whatever is available out there. You have violated everything, absolutely, with idea to, uh, as I have stated, to force me to apply for the whole thing again. Uh, of course, the main thing was to frustrate me, to just, uh, you know, push me out of the Poland, basically rip me apart. That was the main, the main, the main, the main core idea about it. And finally, it got to me that, I was really angry, 
uh, in MK Ultra scenario, they, they had people, some people also gestured on how you, you no longer should apply this for it. You should no longer go and apply. But there were some people who did go and apply, I remember that, uh, for, for disappointment, you know, for the second entrance and so on. It was a kinds of scenario, stuff like that. And so, um, you see, uh, that stuff alone have to be, uh, for that matter, United Nations, Amnesty International, you have to be notified, they have to be contacted because they supersede this uh, Protocol 24. This concerns every nation in the world. These are like, like super major violations uh, that have happened. Uh, against a citizen, U.S. citizen, against European Union citizen. So you cannot do the stuff like this. This is criminal. It's illegal. Um, of course, you have individual in the White House uh, that can use his administration to, uh, to do a lot of harm to me within the United Nations itself. Um, you know, but, you know, the chance is uh, more likely the not exist that eventually I will get uh, some support in respect to this thing and, and the whole thing is going to come out in that case. And the whole thing is what I'm trying to say is you don't look too good. You don't look too good by doing the stuff like that. It's not too good for the Polish state. It's not too good, uh, you know, for the people that the whole thing is going to look really bad. All right, that's all I wanted to say for this video. This is how far things have gotten here. Uh, a little bit like this, a little bit like that, but I think I'm going to get it done, everything. Uh, I'll stay positive uh, in respect to all. It's going to be okay somehow. There was a lot of other stuff as well. There was a lot of other issues as well. Uh, they have created it. They have something anticipated. It was all kinds of stuff. Well, the thing about it is, the only thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to follow my path. Um, rational path. I'm never going to allow myself to be steered in, in, in a stuff I was, you know, in, in, with this hatred and stuff like this. Regarding the Polish psychologist, I'm just going to put it this way. This is, this is just... I am attracted to her because of because because in this in this in this girl that time when she was young and she wanted to be with me so much. There are two things I have seen. One thing was a lot of innocence at the beginning stages, and that innocence, it to me personally, it it felt like. I'm going to say, and, and woman, woman, you know, a woman, woman, like, woman. And is, but the thing is that, that innocence of her, to me, it's why I like it so much, is because she spent a lot of time, they try to push her away from me at all costs. They try to discourage her in a million ways to stay away from me. And regardless of how much they try to discourage her to stay away from me, she stayed all these years. She found time and again her way back to me. Uh, they already got her somehow away from me, but she found her way back to me. You know, and that somehow proves me that this innocence, this initial innocence, sincerity toward me when we, when she first met me here, when I was brought from the U.S., it kind of a stayed in her. Uh, this is why I like it so much. And the second thing is, meaning that if she had a choice, she would not go and follow what whether she liked it or not, she was forced to follow through MK Ultra. She had to be around these Russian people. She had to be. She had to see things the way they wanted her to see. And if she wouldn't, she would be out of the game. And so that kind of measure, I kind of came to conclusion, is not measure at all. That's one thing. 
And the second thing is, I did mention this hatred and stuff. I don't want to go back to that ever again. Um, there is this Jewish guy now. Uh, actually, it's quite interesting one. He is uh, a Belarus who was involved in MK Ultra too. And I did mention his name in, in a news site, but I don't see this guy as a bad guy. I, I kind of liked him. I like him uh, in a way. Um, he is in my room. He was transferred to my room. We were together in Denmark. I mean, this is like a situation like, I know you're going to be all shocked and surprised and confused. And I know that you this can be really confusing stuff. Okay, just don't worry about it. I, I was the one I dealt with. You just watch this stuff. It's real. Uh, we were already in Denmark, near Warsaw. When I came, he was already there. And then he was transferred. Two days ago, he came into my room in, in this place. Okay, so all I want to say is that we, uh, we just... Um, you know, when it comes to this hatred, the issues and stuff like this, you know, I would like people to see this. I mentioned him, you know, I said, Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. I kind of came to conclusion that, I kind of came to conclusion that, uh, I don't, I, I'm not attracted. I'm not attracted to, to a Jewish culture nor their physique, whatever, because I was offered situations over there in Israel and so on, and I declined them. The thing is, however, that Slavic people, yeah, unfortunately, it comes to the Slavic people only, it does not even apply to other people, really. Uh, there is no such thing between Germans, French, British, whatever. <laughs> Uh, we Slavic people have to finally learn from others, especially from Jews. Jews are people that have already lost their homeland and they were thrown out of their own country. It was lost. But thanks to the unity, thanks to, um, you know, willingness to help one another, to stand up for another, like brother with brother next to brother defend one another the only thing that happened was they gained their homeland back and they managed to survive as a nation and that's basically exactly the opposite of what we slavic people do and so the tree has actually a russian tryout that she was in this kind of environment like this i don't see this as a necessary um um weakness i rather see this as a strength uh as the opportunity to uh, you know keep me away from the hatred really and 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 just uh you know be a normal man next to a beautiful intelligent woman that's basically how i see these things as uh, hatred hatred is in moscow hatred is in belgrade uh, and we must not allow these things happen. Uh, we have to show tolerance through, uh, you know, through, through intelligent engagement, discussions, ways uh, that is directed toward prosperity. Because when it comes to prosperity, prosperity alone cuts away this kind of, you know, issues we are dealing with today. Issues that are coming from Moscow, from Belgrade. You know, war, stupidity, crap, hatred. Uh, and so, you know, Switzerland is based on that kind of society. America is based on that kind of society. Western society societies are based on that and i think it's about us for slavic people to do the same thing so it's nice to be in her town that's what watch is she's got a considerable amount of people moms dads people of her own age uh and she pledges to this country i completely understand her uh, and so that's how i came to conclusion that 
it's not over yet. Uh, that's all I want to say. That's how I rationalize things. Today is such a beautiful day. Now I have to go and uch it lepiej polskiego. I have to learn better, improve my Polish. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, till next time. Bye-bye.